What's up everybody, this is Brian. And I'm Logan, and this is Top. Chop. <laughs> and this is Bottoms. Chop. And this is Ebops, whoa. And this is Ebops and Triple. And Swam. No. Oh, and Swam. You guys don't see Swam very often, but Swam. Yeah. And we're Crush Cars! <laughs> Hi team. Happy Sunday. Sorry we haven't been here the last couple days, but in case you haven't noticed, the lighting's a little terrible and we're in a very different location. And that's because we're on vacation for our anniversary. Wow! wow. So we've been out of town for the last couple days and we will continue to be out of town for a couple of days, but we still wanted to be consistent and upload with you guys, though the signal hasn't been the best, which yeah. is why linking up, which was supposed to go Friday, is going up today. So we got it up better late than ever, right? Yeah. We're in the mountains, so please forgive our signal. But that being said, welcome to episode four of Linking Up, where we are going to introduce probably everyone's like favorite cartoon character, but oh. before we do... <laughs> well, if you're not already a subscriber, feel free to go down, hit that subscribe button, throw this video a like. And comment what your favorite cartoon character is. Yeah, from like anywhere in life. Just why not? You know what? Let's live some nostalgia. Tell me your cartoons. I want to know. I love it. We also have an Instagram. It's at CrushCardsYGL. We're on there all the time answering messages, posting posts, posting stories, the whole shebang. You know, it's Instagram. We also have a super wholesome Discord community. I absolutely love it. We have a lot of fun. We Photoshop all these lovely alpaca siblings on the things and it's a darn good time. And then last but not least, we have a Patreon. If you want to support this for the channel we have some of the best benefits in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community bloopers go up this week for august so i would highly recommend you join the patreon so you can see the bloopers of us screwing up for 10 minutes straight it's and always, lord oh lord is our oh, last yeah. of this video it is always worth it so be sure to check it out it's a great time and we absolutely love seeing you there but if not we are just happy you're here so with that being said everyone welcome to episode four and today's guest is Blade YGO! Aww. Who doesn't love Blade, our favorite sentient cartoon character in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community? He does a lot of analysis videos, history, and discussions for Yu-Gi-Oh! So he really offers a lot. If you aren't already subscribed to Blade, we definitely recommend you go check his channel out. He's amazing, he's super cool, and he's really insightful. And his videos are really short, sweet, and to the point, which... We aren't ever no. <laughs> because we talk a lot. But we're super happy to have him today. He's been such an inspiration to us since the get go, and he's just so freaking sweet. We're just super excited. And he's actually going to be talking about stuff that's really helpful to budget players. So Ooh. if you're a budget player, if you're trying to work Perfect. on a budget, Blade's got you. And it's really cool some of these cards that he's going to talk about. So be sure to give it a look, hang out, and uh, just enjoy, just like we're enjoying our Sunday. So. Yeah, love y'all, and hopefully you guys will subscribe to Blade. If you're not already a subscriber, yes. subscribe to our channel. And that's it, guys. Blade, take it away, my friend. Mwah. Kisses. Rise of the Duelist is easily one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh sets in recent memory, not only providing so many staples in the current metagame, but also potentially providing cards that are going to be incredibly powerful in the future. And so in today's video, we're going to take a look at Rise of the Duelist and look at five current undervalued, not just Rise of the Duelist cards, but Yu-Gi-Oh cards in general that could or most likely see play in the future. Before we begin, I want to thank Brian and Logan so much for having me on the Amazing Crush Cards channel. If you aren't subscribed, then definitely make sure to subscribe. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Blade YGO, and I make analysis and history content based on the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. And if you want to see Brian and Logan in a video today, besides just this one, make sure to check out my channel as they helped me create a video about reacting to old Yu-Gi-Oh! from a new duelist perspective. So Definitely make sure to check out that after this one. But with that, let's begin. The first card I want to discuss is Blizzard. So Blizzard is one of those cards in Rise of the Duelist that quite easily went under people's radar. It's a quick play spell with the following effect. Target one face-up spell your opponent controls. This turn, negate the activated effects of that spell and all spells on the field with that same original name. If the targeted card would be sent to the opponent's graveyard this turn, it is added to their hand instead. You can only activate one blizzard per turn. So this card right now is not that great. Regardless of there being decks like Invoke Dogmatica, that blizzard is pretty good against. 
The biggest problem with this card is one, it's only negating spell cards, which against a deck like Ad Emancipator isn't really that practical. And secondarily, the card is returned to the opponent's hand instead of being sent to the graveyard. However, we can't just undermine the fact this card negates any spell card, and in a future format, I'm sure this is going to be taken advantage of. Some cute interactions with this as of right now is negating cards like Dark Ruler No More, Lightning Storm, or if you have a Macro Cosmos on field or a Dark Law. Because of the way the card is worded, this means you're actually able to banish the card instead instead of forcing it to be sent to the graveyard, instead of it going back to the opponent's hand. So in a deck like Heroes, this card's actually really strong, especially in the side deck. But there are potentially other cards you may want to play. For example, a Pointer of the Red Lotus is a perfect example of a card that is arguably just better than Blizzard. But again, that does not mean Blizzard will not have its time to shine, and I'm positive at some point in the future, this card will see play. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite cards from Rise of the Duelist that as of right now isn't seeing play, but could easily in the future, and that's Cella Glare, the Luminous Lunar Dragon. It's a light dragon effect monster with 2400 attack attack 1000 defense which is important because those are monarch stats and it has the following effect. You can normal summon slash set this card without tributing but its original attack becomes 1500. During the main phase quick effect you can target one monster your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card, return this card to the hand and if you do take control of that opponent's monster until the end phase. So Leclerc is a very interesting card because it's generically a good disruption that you can actually keep utilizing every single turn. Secondarily, in specific decks like Monarchs or any deck that uses Heretic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres can utilize this card. Right now, I don't think it's that practical just because the ceiling of the format is so high and there isn't really any deck that can utilize this that effectively. I do think this card's undervalued just because of how strong of an effect this is. Third card, if Cella Glare wasn't my favorite then this definitely is, Ancient Warrior's Oath Double Dragon Lords. This link monster is crazy. It's a win beast warrior link effect monster with 1100 attack. It requires two beast warrior monsters including an, a wind ancient warrior monster and has the following effect. All ancient warrior monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. You can only use each of the following effects of Ancient Warrior's Oath Double Dragon Lords once per turn. If this card is Link Summoned, you can add one Ancient Warrior's card from your deck to your hand. Quick effect, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, then target one face-up card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. In most archetypes, getting a Link monster like this is insane. The problem is, it's an Ancient Warrior. I'm not including this card on the list because it's an Ancient warrior card and I think there will be more support, I don't think that's the case. Rather, I bring this card up because of Tri Brigade. Tri Brigade can utilize this card so effectively, not for its link summon effect, but rather its quick effect on the opponent's turn. Being able to summon a link 2 with disruption like this is amazing, and while you can also summon a some more link from your extra deck if you have 3 materials, having the versatility of this link 2 is important to know, and this card may get a slight increase increase in the future, although I don't think it will be by much, but this is definitely another card to look out for. The fourth card is so freaking cool. It is Red Time Reviver Emitter. It's a Dark Fairy Tuner Effect Monster, level 2, with 800 attack, 0 defense, and it reads, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target one face-up monster on each field. Change them to face-down defense position, and if you do, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect of Red Time Reviver Emitter once per turn. So there's a few things to keep in mind. One, it's a dark monster, so you can send this off a card like Armageddon Knight or Greffer. Two, it's a fairy, so any fairy support can utilize this. But three, that effect is only good going second. While that may seem horrible, because of its attribute and typing, it's very accessible by different routes and gives any fairy or dark deck an easy to summon tuner from the graveyard. And it forces out disruption because by sending this to the graveyard and triggering its effect, 
even though you have to set a monster your opponent's forced to set a monster as well so this card's great going second and it's a free body and while again it's not good right now in the future maybe you'll see some play so for the final card i know this card does see play but that's ice dragon's prison this is a normal trap with the following effect target one monster in your opponent's graveyard special summon it to your field but its effects are negated then you can banish one monster from both players fields that have the same type as each other you can only activate one ice dragon's prison per turn think about it this way you're not only going to dd crow a monster from your opponent's grave and not only do you have the option of keeping that monster on the field but you also have the option to banish both monsters from the field some other notes is you don't have to banish a monster from both players fields but even if you do it doesn't have to be the monster you summoned if you're playing an Emancipator mirror match not that you would play this in it but you can special summon something from your opponent's graveyard and then banish a different rock monster from your field to banish one from your opponent's Ice dragon's prison is an absolute powerhouse of a trap card easily the biggest sleeper from rise of the duelist and is finally another currently undervalued card especially price wise this is only seven dollars i even got mine for five dollars <laughs> just to bring up an example and this card could easily be 10 to 15 dollars so it's definitely something to look out for and potentially pick up while it's undervalued thank you so much again to brian and logan for having me on the channel thank you all so much for watching make sure to check out my channel in the description if you enjoy this content and want to see more of it and with that i hope to see you soon